Okay, so let's go ahead and build a pure CSS modal. I'm going to show you how this works first of all. You can see on the page here we've got just two links. When I go ahead and click this, we get what we would normally like to see when we have a modal window. The background turns to a sort of grey colour and of course there's some opacity here so we can still see the content behind it. We've got the content of the modal which is obviously up to you and we have a close button and all of this you can style as you please. Now when we hit the close button here, as you'd expect that closes and again when I hit the other link we just get the same modal window but with different content. So this is done with pure CSS, there's absolutely no JavaScript involved at all. So how does this work? Well, let's find out. Let's start out by creating the markup that we need and then we'll style the modal window to look how we want. Then we'll go ahead and use the CSS target selector to actually make this work and it's pretty straightforward. So the first thing I want to do then is just define a link here. We'll, we can duplicate this up later to work with multiple modal windows. It's pretty straightforward. And we'll now define the actual container for the modal. So we're going to have a div here with a class of modal. By the way, I've got my style sheet just linked in up here. Uh, it's just in a CSS directory, modal.css at the moment. Obviously, there's no content. So inside of this modal element, then we need a container. And this is really important just because of the way that we use CSS to style this. So we get that background, that dark background effect. So I'm going to call this modal hyphen container. And then in here will be my content. So just write anything in there. Now down here, we want to define a close button. For now, we'll just set the href to the hash and we'll type in close there. So as you'd expect at the moment, this does look pretty boring. We've got the link up here, the content and the close button. So let's style this up to make it look uh, more like a modal window. So over in modal.css then, I'm going to style the modal container. And we'll do this one first, then we'll add the shade in the background. So the modal container needs to be fixed in a position so we can center it in the middle and basically control wherever we want it to be. We're going to give this a background color of white as you'd expect of course this can be anything and I'm going to give this a border just quickly so we can actually see where this is positioned so at the moment then it doesn't look much different but let's go ahead and start to position this so I want to say the left I'm going to give a 50% offset and this isn't going to work entirely because it's going to offset it too far and your content will sort of overlap onto this side of the page so to combat this, we're going to use transform. So for transform, we want to translate this. And on the X axis, this is going to be minus 50%. And on the Y offset, this is eventually going to be a minus value because we want to hide the modal window initially. But let's leave it at zero for now, just so we can see what we're working with. Now we also need a WebKit vendor prefix on here and a MS vendor prefix on here. You might want to check out a website like caniuse.com which will tell you uh, which vendor prefixes you probably should be using. We won't go too much into that. And from there, it's basically been centered in the middle. So we can start to add a few more styles. Uh, I'm going to give this a 20 pixel padding and I'm also going to round out the border borders with the border radius property by five pixels. So that gives us the following. So the paragraph here is adding a little bit of uh, spacing. So for now, just as a shortcut, I'm going to take all margins off the top of all, uh, of all paragraphs. There we go. So now we'll quickly deal with the sizing of this. Just up here, I'm going to set a width of 70% here. But I'm also then going to set a maximum width of, say, something like 400 pixels. This will be the actual size of your container. Um, obviously, it'll give you more than 400 because we've got the padding on there. If we just inspect this, we can see that we've got a size of 442. That's because we've got 20 pixels on one side, 20 pixels on the other, as well as that border, which is adding an extra two. So we've got our modal window styled now. Let's look at how we might go about adding the shade in the background. So for this, we're actually going to apply a before pseudo element to the modal container. So remember at the moment we're styling modal container, which is this. We want to now start modal, so the overall container of this.
So the reason that we're doing this is so we don't have to create another element to control. This all is contained within that same element. So for this, we're going to say we want the content to be nothing. And we're also going to have a fixed position on this. Now we want a display of none eventually. So we'll add this in now. Display of none. But let's just comment this out for now, just so we can see what we're doing. So for the background then, we want this to be RGBA. In fact, this should probably be background color. We want this to be RGBA. We want this to be black. And we want the alpha channel to be something like 0.8, which will allow us to see the content behind it. Now we're going to position this where we need. So we're going to say we want this to be top and left of zero. We want a height of 100%. And we want a width of 100%. So let's check out what this has done. There we go. So you can see now this is filling the window and we're revealing the modal on top. So we've got the styling done just with CSS without too many elements here. So now that we've done that, let's remove that border. We know the sizing and everything of this. So that's just given us a white container on this black background. So as I mentioned then, for the transformation and how we translate this, we actually want this to be hidden. And because we're going to be animating this, we're not just going to say display of none. We're actually going to, on the y-axis, put this at minus 200%. So what this is going to do then is push it up and it will basically be out of view. So minus 200% for all of these. When we go ahead and refresh, that's then gone. But remember I said that we need the uh, before pseudo element to be a display of none because we don't always want to see that dark background here. And it's important to know that this modal window is actually taking up the full width of the page and the full height of the page. But that doesn't matter because when you show it, you're going to have that gray in the background anyway. So here comes the fun part. How do we, when we click this, actually show this without JavaScript? Well, we're going to use something called the target selector, which will map any hash you have at the end of a URL with an ID in your HTML and allow you to apply styles to this based on what hash is present. So what we're going to do then is for the hash of this href, we're going to set that to a name. This can be anything you want as long as it's valid HTML or valid uh, ID. And then for this modal then, we're going to apply an ID of the same value. So this will activate this modal. So if you want to add additional modals, you could of course duplicate this duplicate this content down. I suppose the only downside to this is that you are actually having to write markup on the page rather than load it in afterwards or generate it with JavaScript. But then that's going to give you a nice CSS solution. So we've got our two modal windows and we've got our two links. Oops, let's just change that to that text like so. So now when we click this, we want this to not only show the background and the modal, we want this to animate down as well. So we're going to do this using transitions. So first of all, let's just make this show. We'll deal with the animation afterwards or the transitions afterwards. Now we want to apply on the modal the target selector. Then within the modal window, what do we want to reveal? Well, in this case, we want to reveal the modal container. So we can use the transform CSS property again to translate this, but back to its original position. So we can basically take this, paste it in here, then go ahead and set this to zero, this to zero, and this to zero. So now what's going to happen is when we click on, say, cats or dogs, that's going to match up to this ID and because we have a target selector on this modal here, we're going to style the modal container to have the styles within it. So now when I click cats, well, it should show this window and it looks like I've probably made an error in here. So yeah, the ID here, of course, should not contain the hash, my mistake. So now you can see that because we've got this hash cats at the end, we can see this appear. It doesn't look great because we've not got this shade in the background being shown. And the same with dogs as well. So this is basically revealing then windows. Let's make this look more impressive by actually showing the shade in the background now. That's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is again use the target selector. 
but this time we want to apply uh, some styles to the before pseudo selector or the pseudo element sorry so in this case we just change the display from none up here to block so that's now going to show the before pseudo selector and it's going to modify the translate of this element and pull that down so there we go if we just get rid of that we click cats that works if we click close you can see that automatically works and the reason that that's working is because the href is set to a hash which means that the uh, the target selector no longer works and it just removes that element so we want to make a couple of adjustments here the first thing that we want to do is animate this but the second thing is that the problem we're going to get when we have additional content on this page is clicking close is going to send the user back to the top of the page and that's not going to be desirable because the hash automatically does that so let's tackle the first thing and make the animation and then we'll look at that problem so on the modal container then we need to set a transition on this it's not an animation I use the word animation because technically it's animating but it is the transition property so we use the transition CSS property we choose what we want to transition on and in this case it's the transform property so we're transitioning when that changes we set the speed and then we set the type of transition in this case I'm going to do ease out there are things like ease in out and you can also use say linear if you want to have a linear motion but we're going to use ease out because as it falls down it's going to be nice and smooth so what we want to do then is apply vendor prefixes to this as well so we need the webkit transition vendor prefix and on here we say webkit transform let's just change that to transform so now what's going to happen then when we click that you can see it animates down when we close it it just shoots back up so we've now got the nice transition on that okay so it's looking pretty good but again I mentioned that problem of when we click the close button we're going to be sent to the top of the page let's add some additional content say in between here let's add 50 paragraphs of just some lorem ipsum and that gives us uh, quite a lot of content just to scroll down and work with so if I click on the uh, cats modal you can see that we actually have another problem here and what's happening here is inside of the CSS we are translating it to zero however what's happening is here we need to actually apply a top CSS property as well so I'm just going to say top 20% this could be a pixel value it doesn't really matter so now when we refresh we can see that's come back into place it's just because there was a little bit more content on the page and we've got more to work with so this still works as normal we can close it we can do whatever we want with by the way this also works nicely in a responsive uh, site because we've set the percentage and the max width so now let's deal with this problem of the close button taking us to the top of the page automatically you might have also noticed that when I'm clicking this we're actually being sent automatically to the bottom of the page now the reason that is is that by default the hash within the link here is linking us or sending us to the point where the ID is the same so you could perhaps position these under the links that you're working with just so that doesn't affect it too much or there may be some other solution so you can go ahead and check that out and see what you can do about that moving up and down okay so all I'm gonna do here this is really really straightforward is for the href for the close I'm gonna set modal close so I'm gonna call this modal close here and I'll do the same for this one as well and over in modal.css now what I can actually do is I can target that modal close element and I can basically define no styles so I'm just going to keep this as two empty um, empty braces on the same line so now what's going to happen is when I click on let's actually move these back up to the top so we don't get that shoot down to the bottom straight away so I'll place these there when I refresh and click cats you can see that I'll scroll down click close and that doesn't shoot us back up to the top of the page we're staying in the same position that we were currently on so it's very basic and there's probably a lot more that you could do with this in terms of styling and how you control the functionality of this however that is how we create a modal window with pure CSS